Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. It's been a while, hasn't it? A very long while. Weeks or months, I, I don't even know. Today we're going to be taking a look at my ultimate 3D printing workbench. A project that I started around 18 months ago, but I'm finally getting an opportunity to really work on. I'm pushing this project through and it will eventually be something that you can purchase. So you can get one for yourself. I don't know exactly how that's going to work yet, but that's sort of what the plan is. Without further ado, let's take a closer look at what it's all about. So to begin with, I just want to explain why I'm doing this. Why creating a workbench? Why something so difficult and enormous? Well, quite a few reasons. Firstly, in general, I want to have some funding for the YouTube channel. While YouTube does obviously get some ad revenue and some funding, it's not enough for me to continually do this, which is why I've had to have a break and raise some money to be able to keep going. But by creating a product, I'll be able to have some revenue there, which will be able to support me doing this. So by doing this, I can help you, you can help me, and we all enjoy this process together. The reason for making a workbench is I didn't want something that's just like a t-shirt, which is great, but not overly useful. A lot of them are fairly poor quality, so they tend to just degrade quite quickly. And I didn't really want to do that. So what I wanted to do instead was something that I think everyone would want, everyone would need. I wanted to kind of fill a niche and generate a product that's really quite exciting for a lot of people. So I came down to the idea of a 3D printing workbench, a workbench that's designed specifically for using with 3D printing, with 3D printers, for people that enjoy that process, the making process, specifically around 3D printing. Personally, I think a workbench is a really good choice for this because it's something that's quite fundamental. It's something that's not gonna be thrown away or disposed of in a few weeks or months, but rather something you can keep for years and years and years, and you can remember why you had it and how it came about and all that sort of stuff. Next, let's cover some of my kind of aims and objectives for this workbench. What does I want it to be able to do? What do you want it to be able to do? We'll get onto that a little bit later, but for the moment, here's my ideas of what I want to be able to achieve. Firstly, it's going to be easy to assemble and to disassemble. So that means once you buy it or buy all the parts, you can assemble it in a fairly short amount of time and create yourself a nice rigid workbench structure. Fairly simple to kind of conceptualize, less easy to do in practice, but that's what I want to achieve. The second thing it's going to be is modular and upgradable. As I mentioned, it's going to be easy to disassemble, and that basically means assembly and disassembly, and maybe in parts or in whole, in order to add things to it. So the modular factor will give different features that you can like swap and replace or just upgrade over time. So if you want to start with something small now, maybe just the basic kit, then that's a great way to start. And then over time for like Christmas or birthdays or whatever, you can get a new kit, a new add-on that will improve your experience, improve the features and function and all that kind of stuff. The next two or sort of three objectives all relate to the space on the workbench, how it's going to be used and what you really need for 3D printing from my experience. So these three things are space for the printer, space for filament, and space for modifications, upgrade or tinkering and work and stuff like that. So for the printer itself, obviously you just want a nice open space on a nice rigid surface that's not gonna be all wobbly and make loads of rattly noises or anything like that. For filament, you want some storage space for things that are not opened yet, and also some U-shed space where you can actually like have a spool holder where the filament can just come off into the printer. And then lastly, your working space. You need some space near a printer to be able to like take bits off it, add bits to it, do a bit of work without having to move it to a separate workbench where you would do it and then move it back. By the way, if you like the idea of this project and you want to hear more of it as the process goes along, don't forget to hit subscribe below to make sure you get notified for those next informational videos. I'll be going through all the different design processes and things so you know everything about this workbench by the time it's kind of on the market. Next, let's talk about some of the challenges. First and foremost is the feature set. This is to do with what features, key points is it going to have, like filament storage, printing space, rigid, low noise, and things like that. Of course, this is why I want some feedback from you. Let me know in the comments below, or if you want to give more detailed feedback in the feedback form that's also linked below. It may not be there yet, but it will be in the future. Just to let me know what sort of things you want from the workbench. If you were to have one, what kind of things would you expect it to be able to do? What things do you think you would pay for and what things you would expect to be there anyway? Let me know, as I said, in the comments below. And of course, one of the other challenges is the price point. 
I don't want this to be so cheap that it just ends off as a wobbly, flimsy product, but I also don't want it so expensive that nobody can afford it. That would literally be useless. So, of course, we've got to find somewhere in the middle, but something that's a quality product. I want to have this workbench for you and I that's going to last 10 or 15 years or probably even more. This is something that's going to stick around and be there almost forever. So where am I at at the moment? Well, of course, 18 months ago, I did that basic sketch and ideas. That was all just in CAD and nothing really happened. A lot of people were quite excited about it, but I was quite busy at the time, so nothing really developed. However, more recently, I have built a very simple proof of concept out of the intended materials in a way that I think will be effective. I've made sure the rigidity and structure and some of the overall dimensions are going to be suitable for what I want to try and achieve, and that's all gone rather well. So we're moving on to the next stage where there's more design and integration of more detailed parts. And now I'm buying all the parts to make a full, very detailed, fully functional prototype. And that is hugely exciting. So that's going to be arriving with me probably in the next two weeks. And between now and then, you'll be seeing this video and I'll be starting to work on assembling that and testing a whole bunch of stuff on it. Of course, as I go through the process of improving that design, making design choices, making some trade-offs between certain parts, I'll be talking to you, making videos, hopefully if everything all goes to plan and I can keep the project going along, but also slotting videos in. We're gonna be talking about all those little design aspects that are, I think, really interesting. So make sure you stay tuned and hit subscribe to make sure you don't miss anything. If you are interested in supporting this project or if you're interested in buying one, at the moment, just leave a comment down below so I know who's kind of interested. There will be forms and feedbacks and kind of pre-order cues and stuff like that as time goes on, but they're not ready yet and obviously neither is the product. So just kind of stay tuned, get subscribed to make sure you're watching the videos or uh, can see the videos when they appear so you don't miss out. If you do have any questions, of course, leave them down below too. So that's gonna be it from me for now. Just a quick update to let you know kind of what's going on. And of course, coming very soon will be more videos about the Vector 3D workbench that will have a proper name soon. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.